Hello everyone, and thank you for coming to my place on the internet, where I will be your host, Peter, aka the Mun Shop Guy, where my understanding of humanity gets constantly challenged by the actions of other people around the world. Because I don't think I'll ever understand humanity ever again after some of the things that I've read. That was cute. I liked that. I liked that a lot. So, I know a lot of you guys know that I'm here trying to bring more attention to a rather unknown genre within the manga world that honestly needs way more attention outside of Japan. But, everybody should know that if <laughs> you spend some enough time knowing about Geikomi or Bada, that there's also a lot of talk about the differences between Bada and Yaoi. And this is going to be one of those episodes where I try to bring up some clarification because there is a particular subgenre, I guess, that um really helps kind of clear th things up because it really annoys me when I read some of these articles and they just like, oh, if they're so much different and, they're, and they try to point out the differences of the two genres, then they start pointing out the similarities and they kind of go out of their way to make these conclusions that they're not very much different and it just kind of, yeah, it's, <sighs> this is where we are now. <laughs> and then what happened? All right, so. I'm sure you guys probably already know where this is going by the title of this video, but allow me to go into it. That's a suicide mission! Did someone say crazy person? We want no. no. We want well, I heard it. So, some of you are probably asking me, what is Omegaverse? Well, Omegaverse is an alternate universe model in which sex and gender are separated into different dynamics, while being based off an outdated and disproven study on wolf behavior which was disproven by the same person who made the initial study, yet this is where we are now with this. It's kind of interesting. Wow. So in this universe model, gender is simply what it is, gender. But sex is being dictated by dominance hierarchy that is predicated by pheromones emissions. Why pheromone emissions? I don't understand why. This is something I found very, very common within a lot of BL and Yaoi things. When it comes to fantasy type stuff, whether it be vampires, werewolf, kimono hito, omegaverse, there's always pheromones going on in it. It's it's weird. Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. This hierarchy is divided into three main types. You have the alphas, the dominant sex, in which they are very, very aggressive, almost misogynistic, and therefore usually being in positions of power if not just outright ruling over society in this weird world that we're in now. <laughs> oh my god! You're so weird! Then you have the betas, the unremarkable normies that doesn't really have anything to do with the stories except for being a world-building trope that fills in the space of this fictional universe. I guess. I don't really know what their purpose is, actually. We know what you're saying. We know what you're saying, but no one yeah. knows what you mean, and we really don't have enough time. Then you have the Omegas, the submissive breeding mules of the universe. These are the only ones that can give birth to Alpha's offsprings, meaning Betas cannot conceive for the Alphas, just to kind of stress that. Oh, cool! I mean, cool. And are treated less than human, almost like cattle, most of the time. Also, male Omegas can become pregnant, also known as Mpreg. This is the one thing that threw me off the most, is males becoming pregnant, okay? Oh boy. Good thing I brought my vape. Now there are two other classes within this model if the author wants to use them, which are deltas and gammas. However, they really aren't needed to understand how this world building works. Oh. Oh. I found this model very interesting because it allows for people to explore certain dynamics in the real world that still, to this day, are being fought over. You know, things like gender norms and parental rules being some of those dynamics? <laughs> this also opens the door for male characters to be placed in the position of birth giver and see how males handle being in that role, while also having some classic role reversal tropes that we sometimes see in other stories. <laughs> then as I delve deeper and deeper into this, I start to realize how rather heteronormative this model really is, with how the dominance hierarchy reflects the real world scenarios that causes plenty of discourse, both in debate and in court. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. 
So I was introduced to this genre through Yaoi manga, of course, with Remnant Kemono Hito Omegaverse, then with Pendulum Kemono Hito Omegaverse, which is written by the same author, and then with the Alas Omegaverse, which was all very interesting. I would certainly kind of recommend these. If you have not checked these out, go ahead and check them out. They're pretty, pretty interesting in my book. Oh, thanks, man. I like these stories because they show me just how one can handle this universe model to evoke personal thought that, again, can align with my storytelling ethos. What does this story tell you about yourself, the people around you, and the world that you inhabit? Meanwhile. At first, I thought this was only in yaoi manga, but I come to find out that there is a bigger subgenre within the sprawling mega fandom of the Super Who Lock, which is an amalgamation of Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock Holmes. In all honesty, I can understand Doctor Who and Sh Supernatural, but Sherlock Holmes? Uh, I'm not getting it. Nobody asked you, so why don't you just take a hike? Anyways, I wanted to talk about this so I can show the differences between Yaoi and Geikomi, also known as Bara, with how some manga co can go about making their stories. Now, there are channels out there that go into great depth about this genre. But there is one that didn't make sense with the claim that gay men wrote these stories as a way to feel like they're fulfilling their expectations of bearing a child for their parents. Um... I'm sorry, but I find that very hard to believe that gay men came up with this because I just can't grasp the idea that gay men were like, Yes, I want to bear a child for my heteronormative parents who want me to live just like they did by making up fictional stories that men can get pregnant. Uh, that was stupid. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any gay men who have thought of this, or even in that fashion. I'm just saying that I'm having a hard time believing that statement. However, if you want to disprove me on that part, then go ahead. It wouldn't be the first time I was wrong about something, and it certainly won't be the last time either. Get him! So, I'm sure many of you are asking the question, where does Bara have to do with this? That's a great question. Because of the amount of discord I've seen between Yaoi and Bara, or Geikomi as I keep trying to refer to it, I want to clear some things up. I'm trying to show the difference so we can better understand the differences between these two genres, and I'm desperately trying to bring more attention to one that doesn't get enough. Well, thank you. Bara doesn't have anything within the Omegaverse fandom, as far as I've seen at least. If you have found something that's Omegaverse that has Bara characters in it, please send it my way. I would like to take a look at it. You usually see more episodic takes on stories with Geikomi. Mostly because the material within this genre tends to be one-shot manga, so it tends to stay episodic. Um, okay. If you want to know more about that, go check out my episode on the history of Bara and learn more about the tropes within that genre. It's free real estate. So, we have a genre that is clearly created by women, which Geikomi or Bara is not. And we have tropes in here that I don't see anywhere in Gay Komi, specifically Mpreg. Okay, that's one major clear delineation between Bara and Yaoi, in my opinion, it has been Mpreg. Wait, what? The other thing I noticed within Omegaverse is the typical Sime and Uke dynamic that I've seen so many times in Yaoi, which to me lends further credence that women primarily cultivated this genre. A lot of the times, the Omega tends to act very much in a feminine role that takes me out of the story because it doesn't explore the situation of a male in what is typically a female's role, but instead just puts the character into that role and just fills in the expectations of said role, I guess, because that makes sense somehow, like, it, hmm, right? Huh? What the hell's going on here? Huh? Now, you may be wondering what I mean by the title when it involves crazy bitches. Another great question! So, within this sprawling genre, there is a subsect where a few women decided that they were too much gay stuff and wanted to make more heterosexual coupling stories. Known within the fan fiction world as het, honestly, I think most labels are dumb because humans have to label everything that makes themselves feel better somehow. For some reason, I don't think I'll ever understand. Then again, day to day life makes little sense to me as it is. But we're getting off track here, so let's get back to where we were. <laughs> this guy. Yes, in the fanfiction world, heterosexual couples are in the minority in terms of stories, mostly because we have plenty of heterosexual couples to root for in the mainstream media as it is. Oh, I see. Yeah. So in this budding world of het omegaverse, God, that's the dumbest nomenclature I've ever had to say. 
There is an author who I'm not saying her name or even her pen name because of how responsive this person is to people criticizing her and her actions. This particular author is in the middle of a legal battle regarding copyright infringement, which there are two videos from Lindsay Ellis that I highly suggest checking out, as well as an episode from the A-Lab podcast talking about these lawsuits and just how coconuts the entire situation really is. And I gotta tell you, this doesn't even come close to scratching the surface of how coconuts this whole thing is. Sorry, Lindsay, but my mom who is a pr practicing paralegal, you know, the person who does all the work for a lawyer without having to do the bravado of a lawyer in the courtroom. My mom did say you did a really good job in a thorough account on all the p legal paperwork regarding the lawsuits. I did want to touch up on one thing that Lindsay didn't say clearly, that some people just don't know. There is a part where the author was talking about being dismissed with prejudice, trying to make it sound like it's a big deal. It really isn't. You know what with prejudice means? It literally just means that the case is over and you can't bring it back up in court again. Basically, the judge was telling this person to piss off with her case and didn't want to hear it ever again. It kind of lends into the whole double jeopardy thing as well if you think about it, but again, we're not going to get into it. We're trying to keep this simple. Another point that I would like to touch on is the idea that this author in innovated non-con into this genre when it has always been there to begin with. Also, when it comes to hetero couples, why does the sexual scene stay violent after the relationship has been established? Do a lot of straight women like these acts of violence inflicted upon them but hide it under their feminist ideals? I can't really understand why, but then again, I don't understand women as it is, or any humans for that matter. Except for my husband, of course. He's really great, everyone. Say hi! Hello. 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 How's everyone? Hello. Just so I can clear any liability that this person could claim on me, even though I never mentioned this person's name or pseudonym, I am legally disclaiming to you all not to go harass this author. Now, if people have done so and it's not making her change her ways. So if you want to make her very upset, then go support the authors and creators she has targeted. Again, Lindsay Ellis covers most of those people, so go check out her videos for more info. All right, then keep your secrets. In summary, Omegaverse does offer us some really interesting storytelling ideas that we can really take advantage of with social commentary regarding gender and parental roles. Whatever you say, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't know why I just said that. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but gotta stand by it. There could be some good groundbreaking works that can explore certain topics that we have trouble in the real world in ways that would be so rewarding. All while showing how different authors of different genders tackle these subjects from their vantage points. While the stories I have read were enjoyable for me, except for the non-con stuff, it's just not my thing. I see the appeal and I would never take it away from anyone, but I would also never stand in line for it. I would like to see people really go crazy with the normative roles that the real world has and flip them on their head in this genre. Why would you do that? I would like to see how the genre tackles female alphas in their stories because I think it is rather uncharted territory within this genre. For female alphas at least. I have just not really seen any so if you guys know any stories that have a like female alpha that's a major part of the story please send it my way I would like to see that. Are you sure about that? I would also like to see betas having more weight in the stories besides being unremarkable masses that are just there because they're just there. Like, I would like to see them actually have more weight on the ecosystem of this universe than just being that. And lastly, I would like to see the Omegas being more than just simple breeding meals for the Alphas. I get that if you set your world building up like this, but I would like to see the system be torn down sometimes as we really don't get much of that in this genre. As far as I've seen at least. I don't think we're asking the right question. So yep, that's pretty much all for my episode. I certainly hope that this shed some light on the differences between Yaoi and Bara. I know this is not going to be the first nor this is going to be the last time I have to touch up on this subject. If you guys want me to do a separate little side episode where I just actually go through a lot of the different points that I've seen people talk about between Yaoi and Bara, or Geikomi as it should be called, then please let me know down in the comment section below or any of my social medias that you will find linked in the description down below as well. You have all those wonderful places. Much, much, much later. 
Also, as one of my final parting notes, I just want to thank everybody who has joined my Discord server. I'm starting to see people join and talk to me about it, and they are sharing manga with me. It's really great. So, if you guys have any manga stories that you want me to read, specifically with the bar, gay komi, or men's love tag on it, please send it my way so I can review it. I definitely want to know what the community thinks is should be like my first lewd uh, manga to review because I honestly don't know where to start and I honestly don't want to just jump straight to Jiraiya or Dagame because I kind of feel like that's just a little too typical. Maybe there's something that would be a little bit more interesting for people to start out on. I don't know. Please let me know. I want to hear from you guys. Please. This is serious. But yes, that is all for my episode. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed what I had to say. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Please follow me on my social medias. I'm kind of okay. I, I try to be at least, you know, just trying to be kind of cool. Come on, come on, we gotta go. But yes, thank you to everybody who's watched slash listened to this episode so far. I hope you guys enjoyed what I had to say and enjoy the content that I'm making. And I definitely would like to see you guys in my next episode. Goodbye.